welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. I have the lunch all packed, and I'm ready to take you on a picnic in the woods. There's a beautiful little glade deep in the forest. Birds singing, that wonderful clean aroma of fresh growth mixed with leaf mold and last year's pine needles. The cool touch of grass to your bare feet if you care to take your shoes off. Doesn't sound very mysterious? Doesn't frighten you? Well, stay with us. It will. Our mystery drama, Stay Out of Dutchman's Woods, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Field and Farrington and stars Paul Hecht. I think you'll agree there's nothing more delightful than that first day of vacation. You've shucked off all your cares. Your freedom is still new and exhilarating. Your inevitable return to workaday things is too far in the future to dampen your high spirits. Of course, vacations, like other pleasant-seeming prospects, may take unpredictable turns. You just can't look more than a few seconds into the future without facing an uncertainty. Ronnie and Peg Andrews have driven all day to get to their chosen vacation spot in the main north woods. But are they tired? How about down by the old mill stream? I think I can even do a pretty good tenor on part of that one. Uh, down by the old Oh, mill. Ronnie, I love you dearly. For better or worse, like I told the man. But if you hit one more sour note... I'm going to get out of this car and walk the rest of the way. You know what your trouble is, Peg? You got a tin ear. How far do you think we are from the inn? Oh, it can't be more than a few miles now. You tired? Not really. I don't know. We've been driving through this forest for miles. So it gives me the creeps. It's so dark and gloomy. The creeps? You're kidding. It's absolutely beautiful. Mm, in a way. But it looks so... I don't know. Brooding. Contrast, that's all. The sun's so bright, where it gets through to the road, it makes the woods seem dark. What are you doing? I just want to show you. Ten steps into the woods and you'll see there's nothing gloomy about it. It's just the contrast. I don't want to go in there, Ronnie. Oh, well. Okay. We can come back another day. Maybe tomorrow. It really is a beautiful forest. We could bring a picnic lunch. Well... Okay. Maybe it'll look better to me tomorrow. Be right with you. Oh, I love it, Ronnie. I just love it. It really looks the way a cliffside inn ought to look. Even nicer than Bill and Edna said. Isolated, that's for sure. Now, uh, you'd be Mr. and Mrs. Andrews, wouldn't you? Uh, that's right. Uh, we have reservations. Uh, good thing you made them, too. We might just have closed down. And a season for us. Are we the only guests? Only ones. My name's Lou Griffin. I'm the proprietor. Sarah! Come in. I was just putting up a fresh pot of coffee. Figured we'd be wanting some. Long trip and all. I thought I smelled coffee. Just what I need. Now, I hope you ain't disappointed in the place, Miss Andrews. Disappointed? I adore it. It's even nicer than Bill and Edna told us. Bill and Edna White. They were up here earlier in the summer. White? What? Oh, yes. They're the couple with the two young boys, huh? Ken and Eddie, yes. <laughs> Never did see two young uns could be in so many different places at one time. <laughs> I've been thinking some about... Seeing if I can't get hold of some hex signs to keep young'uns out next season. I noticed the hex signs. Outside and even in here. Yeah. Anything we got plenty of, it's hex signs. Are they just for decoration, or do you really mean them to keep evil spirits away? Oh, they're just for what you call color. And it don't hurt to be on the safe side. What do you mean? Maybe there's evil spirits. Maybe there ain't. Maybe they want to get in. Maybe they don't. But I never heard of a hex sign doing any harm. Morning, Mr. Griffin. Morning. Uh, Sarah, you can put the eggs on now. Lou and Sarah, what we like to be called. 
friendlier that way. Okay, we're Peg and Ronnie. I brought your coffee out. Eggs won't be ready for a minute or so. I brought you a cup, too, Lou. Fine, as long as these good folks don't mind me sitting down with them. Oh, no, no, please do. I'll be right out with the rest. All ready but the eggs. How are you folks planning to spend the day? Well... Well, we had a discussion about that, and I won. He wants to take a hike into the woods. Dutchman's Woods? Oh, is that what they're called? I wouldn't go in there if I was you. You wouldn't? Folks get lost in there. Been a lot of that. Oh, we won't get lost. I have a very good sense of direction. But all the same, you take my advice. You stay out of Dutchman's Woods. See, Ronnie? Oh, that's ridiculous. We can take care of ourselves. We're not going to get lost. Nobody aims to, of course. Folks do it, though. Yeah, I was going to ask you if Mrs. Griffin... Oh, Sarah would be uh, willing to put up a picnic lunch for us. Oh, she'll fix you up something for lunch. No trouble about that. Only thing is... Oh, we'll be very careful. Well, I'll uh, just go to talk to Sarah about the lunch then. Thanks. But if I was you... I'd stay out of Dutchman's Woods. Oh, Ronnie, I'm hungry and I'm tired. Some kind of bug bit me on the arm. And I want a sandwich and then I want to go home. This place gives me the creeps. I can't understand you, Peg. We've taken hikes in the woods before. You never acted like this. I know, I don't really understand it either. There's just something about this place. Can't explain it any better than that. Hey, hey, look up ahead. Hey, there's a clearing up there. Sunlight. Oh, I didn't think I'd ever live to see it again. Oh, don't be a nut. Maybe it's a good place to stop for lunch. Come on. Hey, look. Hey, it's like a garden, isn't it? It's pretty, all right. Especially after all that gloom. Hey, look, we can spread the cloth Sarah gave us on that flat rock, eh? All the comforts of home. And then after we eat, we go home. Right back the way we came. Yeah, except that you're pointing in the wrong direction, Peg. What? I am not. We just came right out between those two bushes. Between those two bushes. Huh. All I can say is it's a good thing you married a man who can find his way around. Ronnie, I'm sure. I'm really just as sure as can be. Yeah, well, don't worry about a thing. They don't call me Ron the Pathfinder for nothing. Well, come on, let's eat. Okay, but I could have sworn. Lou Griffin, do you mean to sit there and tell me you let them to wander off into Dutchman's woods? Wasn't a matter of letting them, Sarah. Dead set on it, they were. He was anyhow. Oh, if I'd known where them two was fixing to go, I never would have put up that lunch for them. I tried to talk them out of it. She didn't much want to go in the first place. But he wouldn't budge an inch. You could have told him the truth about that place. And got nothing for my trouble but laughed at telling a tale like that. No, sir. Comes to talk about Dutchman's Woods. I'm on my own business. Ronnie. Ronnie, will you stop and listen to me? Oh, all right. Ronnie, the underbrush wasn't this thick before. It didn't come this way. Well, I have to admit, I don't remember it being quite this overgrown before. But I know we're going in the right direction. I'm I'm very sure of that now, Peg. You're not sure at all, are you, Ronnie? Well, may- maybe I am just a little disoriented. Lost, I think, would be the word. Well, all right, I'm lost. If you like it better that way. It's not as if we were lost in an African jungle or something with wilderness for miles around. We're we're in a tame woods in Maine. There's there's no cause to panic. I'm not panicking, Ronnie. I just... Let's go back, shall we? See if we can find the clearing where we had lunch. All right. Ronnie, I think it's over this way. I'm sure we weren't coming from that direction before. All right. All right. Oh, I've got to stop and catch my breath, Ronnie. Oh, we can't be far from the clearing now, can we? No, I wouldn't think so. I believe we passed that, that row and tree over there when we came this way before. That's 
west, Ronnie, right into the sun. Where? So? Don't you think we ought to keep walking east? I mean, the road is east of here. We know that. It doesn't really matter where we come out on the road, does it? As long as we do come out. Oh, okay. Well, you, you feel rested now? Oh, enough. Is that you, Lou? It's me. Oh, did you see anything of them? Seen their car parked there alongside the woods. Oh. They're lost, all right. Well, why didn't you keep on looking? Did you go into the woods? Oh, a few steps here and there. Not very far in. Oh, well, land sakes. How do you expect to find somebody that's lost in the woods if you don't go into the woods? Well, do you think you was aiming to get rid of me or something where well, you keep trying to run me off into them woods? Well, them young folks is our responsibility, Lou. Oh, Ronnie... Is it late enough to start getting dark? No, not yet. It's not quite five yet. Well, then why is it getting dark? Uh-huh. Well, maybe, maybe it's going to rain, Peg. Oh, Lord, that's all we need. Well, the worst of it is, without the sun to guide us, we, we can't be sure we're still going east. It's getting cold, too. Yeah. Ronnie? Yeah? I'm scared. Oh, no, don't be frightened, Peg. There, there's really no reason to be. Sure, we're lost, and... It's going to be inconvenient as hell. If it starts raining, we're going to get drenched and be damned uncomfortable. But there's nothing to be scared of. Well, I am scared all the same. Oh, now, come on. Let's keep moving. The underbrush has thinned out some, at least. And I'm pretty sure we're still going east. Huh? You were right about that. If we keep going on east, we can't miss the road. So, huh, we're really not in such bad shape as we... Hey. Hey, Peg. There's a clearing up ahead. Well, what do you want to bet it's ours? Peg? Peg, where are you? Peg? Isn't that a clearing over there, Ronnie? Oh, it must be. It's lighter in there. And... Ronnie? Ronnie, don't play games with me. I'm scared enough already. Ronnie? Where... Where are you hiding? Ronnie! Peg Answer me, Peg Answer me, will you? Ronnie Peg Peg, is that you? Over this way, Ronnie That's right Ronnie, over this way Yes, that's fine Keep on just the way you're going There Hello, Ronnie You're you, you you, aren't, Peg. Of course I'm not, but won't I do? Don't you think I'm as beautiful as she is? Well, I was... Uh, I, I, I was looking for... Don't uh, you, Ronnie? Uh, well, I... I think you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Sirens abound in legend and folklore. And, uh, if I may say so without starting a controversy, they're not unheard of even in real life. Few men, no matter how virtuous, are completely siren-proof. So, if there's a siren operating deep in a main woods, it shouldn't surprise us too much. The question is, will she lead, or try to lead, Ronnie Andrews to his destruction. We'll investigate further when I return with Act Two. On the first day of their stay at Lou Griffin's Cliffside Inn, Ronnie and Peg Andrews decided to take a picnic lunch and go exploring Dutchman's Woods. As Lou had warned them, this turned out to be a mistake. First, they lost their way, and then they became mysteriously separated. In searching for Peg, Ronnie has come upon a strange and extraordinarily beautiful woman. In fact, almost his first words to her were, I think you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. 
Thank you. And you must be as good as you are beautiful, so I'm sure you'll help me. Of course. My wife and I, uh, Peg, Peg, my wife and I, we, we lost our way in the woods earlier in the day, and... Well, we've been wandering around <laughs> in circles, I guess, all afternoon. People do get lost in Dutchman's Woods. Didn't anybody tell you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, well, you see, I wanted to come anyway. It was... I don't know, it was as if the woods drew me. I understand. Yeah, and, and, and then somehow Peg and I got separated. and Well, now I can't find her. Uh, do you know the woods well? <laughs> I know every tree. Every stone, every flower... Every path. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. I know Dutchman's uh -huh. Woods. Great, great. Now, will you please help me find my wife? My name's Katrina. Uh -huh. Last names aren't important, are they? We'll just be Ronnie and Katrina. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm very glad to know you, uh, Ka Katrina. Mm -hmm. It wasn't far from here, the place where my wife and I got separated. Ronnie and Katrina. Would you like to see my house? House? Hmm. Oh, you mean you have a house in the middle of this jungle? A very beautiful house, yes. Come, I'll show it to you. Oh, thanks very much, but uh, uh, may maybe Peg and I could see it together after we found her. I, well, I just can't go wandering off with you while Peg's lost somewhere and probably looking for me right this minute. You must be hungry. You can have dinner with me, Ronnie. And I'll give you some of my special wine. Uh, li aren't, aren't you listening to me? My wife is lost. I, I, I can't just leave her out there. I, I gotta find her. Will you her. please stop talking about that woman? It's very rude of you, talking to me about another woman. I won't have it. Now, look, uh, I, I don't think you understand. My wife and I got separated somehow in the woods. I'm not looking for her. Oh, well, you, you can't mean that you... Were... I've offered you my hospitality. I've said I'd give you dinner, and I've... I've even asked you to have my wine. I'm very angry with you, Ronnie. Please, I'm begging you. Well, why won't you help me? If you wish to come with me, perhaps I'll help you find your wife later on. You'll never find her without my help, I promise you that. Well, I must be going. You're making a very stupid mistake. But if you don't know any better... No, no, uh, Katrina, uh, wait! Uh, are you coming with me? Oh, well... Uh, oh, yes, all right, I'll come with you. Ronnie! Oh, Ronnie, can't you hear me? Lou, it's pretty near 11 o'clock. And them two ain't back yet. What two ain't? Oh, well, we knew they was lost. It's still raining. It's turned cold as winter just about. And them two lost out there. Funny thing, she ain't back yet. Did not expect him, but you think... If you think I'm going to let you go back to sleep again, you got another thing coming. Turn that lamp on, will you? I'm going to get up. Maybe put on a pot of fresh coffee. Does that sound good to you? Yeah? Well, I expect a glass of apple, Jack. We've been without more board. Lou, all you had to do was just tell them. You think he'd believe a tale like that? Put up in the city? Now, yeah, frighten my face, he would have. Well, I wish you'd told him. Sarah, we don't even know if it's true. We know men get lost. That we do know. We don't know why they get lost. I couldn't tell that story as gospel. Who, who's that? Lou? Sarah? Oh, somebody help me. <laughs> We're coming, Peg. <laughs> no, no. Now, bawling about it ain't gonna do no good. Whatever it is, what happened? I can't find him. I can't find him anywhere. Somebody has to help. Yes, sir. Happens every time, my dear. We were standing right there together, and then all of a sudden he just wasn't there. He wasn't there. You better come back in the kitchen and have a nice cup of hot coffee, Peg. Oh, no, there's, there's no time. We have to find Ronnie. Will, will you help me look for him? 
Oh, somebody has to help me. Yes, I, I'll go with you. Would appreciate it. What if you get lost? Women don't. Peg found a way home all right, didn't she? And I've been in them woods before. He... I just can't understand it. You know, I thought at first he was hiding from me. Playing some silly kind of game. And he was there and... And then he wasn't. Two seconds later. I told him not to go into them woods. You gotta admit I told him. Men just ain't safe in Dutchman's woods. You see that big boulder just ahead, Ronnie? Yeah, the one shaped so, sort of like a boat? Yes. Yeah. Just when you go around to the left of it, uh -huh. you can see the house. Take my hand. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, 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 Katrina. Yes? We are going to look for Peg, uh, aren't we? I mean, uh, afterwards. Uh, after I've seen your house and uh, had some of this uh, wine of yours. You can be so tiresome. Well, I'm sorry. Just a minute now. There. Huh. I, I don't believe it. <laughs> I knew you'd be surprised. The others always have this. Uh, others? Well, you don't think you're the first guest I've ever had, do you? Oh. All I meant was nobody ever expects to find a house like this out in the middle of the woods. Oh, gee, it isn't a house at all, is it? It's a castle. It really is. A perfect replica of one, anyway. My husband had it built exactly like a castle in... Oh, I don't remember. Somewhere in Holland. <laughs> Your husband? <laughs> you're so jumpy. He's been dead for years. I can't figure out how we missed seeing this place from the road when we drove in yesterday. Peg, you feel like you're up to it. Back into them woods and all. Oh, yes. I think we ought to go right now. I mean, the longer we I wait... I think maybe we'd better take this with us. Peg sign. Mm. What's it supposed to do? It's a strong one, this here. It's meant to ward off witches and evil spirits and, well, just about anything else that walks the night. Well, well, like Lou says, it don't hurt to be on the safe side. Come, let's get out of here. Never we'll find that man of yours standing around here telling old wives' tales. Here you are, Ronnie. A glass of the most unusual wine you've ever tasted. Uh, aren't you having any? Oh, no, not just now. Oh. Well, no, don't sip it, Ronnie. Oh. Drink it right down. Uh, huh. <laughs> Doesn't really taste like wine after all. You don't like my wine. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I didn't mean that. It's just that... Oh. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Now it does. Hey, hey, it leaves a very pleasant aftertaste. Exactly. You can have another glass when we go in for dinner. You know. Well, well, uh, well, what I really ought to do is... The thing that makes my wine so different is a special ingredient. I'm not sure you can find it anywhere at all except right here in Dutchman's Woods. It grows wild, like the grapes. All the ingredients I use to make the wine grow wild. I, uh, I have to go out later and find Peg. I can't just leave Peg wandering around out there. Of course not. But would you like to come inside now, Ronnie? Sure. Sure, why not? Can you point out where it was you stopped the car and went into the woods, Faye? I'm not sure. It all sort of looks alike. Mm, well, no matter. You mustn't think ill of Lou because he didn't want to come out and help you look for your husband, Peg. Well, it did seem odd. See, he knows I'm safe enough. It's only men that get lost in Dutchman's woods. But that doesn't make sense. Well, it does if you know the story. Katrina's got no interest in women. Katrina? Mm -hmm. She's the cause of it all, if there's any truth in the tale they tell. When men get lost in... In there, in, in the woods, they don't just disappear, do they? I mean, they, they're found eventually, aren't they? Oh, they're found all right, what's left of them. What do you mean? Well, now, I shouldn't have said that, but the truth is, they're found dead. Dead? Now, it's going to be different with Ronnie Peg, and you've got to believe that. 
Dead of what? Oh, exposure. Sometimes starvation. Whatever it is that kills people lost in the woods. Though if you ask me, there's a whole lot more to it than that. You like my house, Ronnie? Oh, yeah. It's extraordinary, Katrina. This is the most extraordinary house I ever saw. At first, I didn't like it. Can you believe that? I thought it was too far away from everybody and everything, and I hated my husband for making me live in it. Oh, yeah, your husband. Mm. Hey, he's dead, did you say? Oh, yes, a long time ago. My wife is alive. She's lost in the woods, but she's alive. Drink your wine, Ronnie. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm so sleepy. Wait until you see the banquet hall. Do you know I could seat over a hundred people if I wanted to? But I like to entertain one at a time. Mm. Just one at a time. Three years ago. What is it? What is it, three years? Oh, a crowd. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to like each other, aren't we, Ronnie? Are you sleepy, Ronnie? You know you're quite handsome. They used to call me a witch a long time ago. People believed in things more then. Oh, yes, you're very handsome. I may keep you for quite a long time. Several weeks, even. Oh, yes, that would be nice. A bleak, rainy night in a dense forest that already has an evil reputation. A good time and place for unnatural goings-on. Well, there's a good deal going on in Dutchman's Woods that seems unnatural. If you accept Webster's definition of natural, occurring in conformity with the ordinary course of nature, Webster says. The abrupt and unexplained separation of Ronnie from Peg doesn't seem to qualify as natural, according to that definition. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. A beautiful woman named Katrina has lured Ronnie Andrews into her castle-like stronghold and plied him with wine, which she herself describes as most unusual. Peg, Ronnie's wife, along with Sarah Griffin, have gone into Dutchman's Woods looking for Ronnie. Peg still thinks of Ronnie as simply lost in the woods on a miserable rainy night. But Sarah obviously knows, or suspects, a lot more than she's telling. You shine your flashlight round about, Peg, while I keep mine straight ahead so I can see where we're going. All right. Ronnie! Oh, I don't know as it'll do much good to keep on calling for him. Sarah, what did you mean when you said somebody called Katrina was the cause of it all? That's a long story, that one. It don't seem like a very good time to go into it right now. I want to know. Well, yes, I guess you would. Sarah, tell me. I guess I ought to, yes, now that I've gone this far. Hey, keep on flashing your light around. Yes, I will. Well, it starts back a long while ago. Not much after the revolution was over. The American Revolution? That's the one. Seems there was this man, Dutch trader, name of Hans Groot. And he fell head over tea kettle in love with this young girl that was sashaying around New York society at the time. Her name was Katrina. Katrina? Mm. But uh, that was around the time of the revolution, you said. I just keep on shining your light around now. It must have been filthy rich, this Hans Groot. He was no spring chicken at that time, and yet Katrina agreed to marry him without so much as a maybe, and her hardly out of her teens yet. So they had a big, fancy wedding and settled down in a house he'd bought in New York. You think if we find Ronnie, he will already stop be... stop worrying, honey. Well, anyway, they didn't exactly live happy ever after there in that house. Katrina was a wanton. Only word that suits her. Wanton, pure, and simple. Got so she would spend more of her time with the young blades around town than she was with her own husband. And it didn't take him long to get good and sick of it. I can't see what all this has to do with... Well, now you ask me to tell you, Peg. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. But he was still as stuck on Katrina as ever. So he got a hold of this great big wooded acreage up here in Maine. Well, mind you, near all woods anyway, them days. 
and he built such a house on it as you wouldn't believe if you was to see it. Regular castle it was. Right out there, middle of the woods, millions of miles from nowhere. And he brought Katrine up here and put her in that house, and that was that way he figured. Here? You mean right here in this forest? Mm, Dutchman's Woods, it's called. Hans Groot was the Dutchman. Trouble was, you see, the Dutchman himself couldn't spend his whole time in his castle. He still had his business affairs in New York. And even some interests overseas, the same. So he had to leave Katrina alone in that big old house now and again. And that Katrina, oh, she must have been a resourceful one. She found her men all right. Was no stopping her. Even shut up in the house, the castle? Well, she wasn't exactly shut up in it, just didn't have no means of travel. But she took to roaming around the woods. You see, there was plenty of poaching went on in them days, lots of it. So Katrina had run across a poacher hunting on her husband's property, and she'd take him home with her, and... Uh, might as well have left her in New York for all the good it done Hans Groot. Is the castle still standing? Mm, no, not properly speaking. Anyway, Hans Groot come home and caught Katrina with one of them poachers. And he killed them both. Katrina along with the man. And you think the same Katrina? That's the way the story goes. If you're superstitious enough to believe it, Katrina still walks Dutchman's woods. And any man that comes her way is fair game. Oh, 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 what in the name? How did I get into a place like this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. You fell asleep, Ronnie. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I must have been more tired than I realized. Uh, oh, I still feel sort of sluggish. You were tired. Hey, look. We, we've got to get moving. We, we've got to find Peg. Peg? Peg, Peg, Peg. That's all I hear from you. My name is Katrina, not Peg. I'm not accustomed to having my guests talk about other women. Well, we... We ought to go out and see if we can find Peg. You'll right? only lose yourself again if you go out there. But you promised you'd help me. I didn't promise at all. She'll find her way home. She's probably back at the inn right now, safe and sound. She's a woman. I don't enjoy another woman's company. I don't want women here. Can't you understand that? Are, are you saying that, that you cause people to get lost? You aren't lost, Ronnie. You're here. Right in this room with me. There's a clearing up ahead I, oh, I don't think it's the place where we had lunch, though No, Peg, no, it's the ruins The ruins? Yeah, the place the old castle used to stand Ain't much left now but rubble where the masonry fell down Mostly overgrown with weeds and vines and the like The old foundation's still there You can't see it too well after dark, of course And you think this is where... Yes, if there is a Katrina, and if she's dragged your young man off somewhere, I'd say this is the most likely place. Ronnie! Now, want my opinion, it won't do a lick of good yelling for him. Let's just go hunting through the rubble. I feel funny, Katrina. Kind of fuzzy, yeah. Oh, it must be that wine of yours again. <laughs> it's partly the wine, I'm sure. But also partly just me. Hmm. Oh, Ronnie, we're going to be very happy. Happier than you've ever been, I promise you that. Is it raining outside? I can't tell. It looked like... You're not listening to me. Oh, yes, I am. You were talking about happiness. You've never been happy, Ronnie. I mean, wildly happy. Happy with nothing to intrude. You've never been happy that way, have you, Ronnie? Well, you're... you're very beautiful. It's all for you. Right now. Not forever, I don't promise that, but right now. You're my only reason for being beautiful. Very beautiful. What? What, what was that? We'll belong to each other. I'll be completely yours. Listen. Somebody called me. I have a feeling, Sarah. I have this crazy feeling that he heard me. It's no crazier than anything else. Maybe he did. Ronnie! Can you hear? Sarah, look. It's turning into... It's not 
not just an old heap, but it's a castle. Sarah, can you see it? Sarah? Sarah, where are you? Oh, no, she's... Dear Lord, help me. Mommy! It was Peg. It was Peg calling me. Mommy! Get out of my house. You're not welcome here. You're an intruder. I don't allow intruders. Peg! We're in here, Peg. Can you hear me? I can. I can hear you, Ronnie. This way, Peg. Come toward my voice. Stop talking to that woman. Don't come in here, you. I forbid it. Oh, Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie, we looked everywhere, Sarah and I. Oh, I thought I'd never... I thought I'd never see you again. Ronnie, take your hands off that woman. Who is this? Oh, uh, Katrina. Her name's Katrina. She found me in the woods. I... I think You'll she... find out soon enough who I am, you little fool. What are you doing here? I came here looking for my husband. Your husband doesn't want to see you. Get out. I'm not going to leave without him. He doesn't want to go with you. Do you, Ronnie? You don't want to leave with her. Tell her. You do want to come with me, don't you, Ronnie? Well, I... Ronnie, wouldn't you like another glass of wine? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't... Wine? Think... Has he been... He doesn't drink. No, Peg, you don't understand. As you see, he doesn't want to talk to you. Why don't you leave? How can you stay where you're not wanted? I don't know who you are or what you are. Whether you're a ghost or a witch or maybe both. I don't know and I don't care much. You're not going to take my husband away from me. How very brave she is. And what if I tell you I am a ghost and I am a witch? And I can destroy you both. What if I tell you that? First, I'd have to call you a liar. Because I've never believed in such things. And then, if it should turn out you're not a liar, I'd have to say go ahead and destroy us. Both of us, though. Not just one. Both. A liar! I'll... I'll... Ronnie, tell her to get out of here! A, a peg. Well, Ronnie... Peg. Katrina, I can't... What kind of a spineless creature are you? Tell her. Peg, I... I want to come with you. Yes, Peg, I... I want to leave here and go with you. No! All right, you... You witch, ghost, harlot, whatever you are. Stop us if you think you can. I, I think I'm all right now, Peg. I, I don't know what she did to me, Stop but... Stop this! You stop this, both of you. Don't you know who I am? I'm Katrina. You idiots, I can bring this castle down in a heap on top of you. Don't you know that? It's already down in a heap. I saw it. I'll show you. I'll show you! Peg! Peg, here! Under this table! The whole house! The whole house is coming down! I don't, I don't think he can hurt us, Ronnie. The real house crumbled years ago. Over here, Sarah. Oh. Help us. Is that you, Peg? Where in the world did you... <gasps> Land sakes. Oh, is it... It's Ronnie. Uh, oh, help me with him, will you? Yes. We've got oh. to get him up off this wet uh, ground. Ronnie. Yeah, his, where am my... Is that oh. you, Peg? Yes, Ronnie. Can you stand up? Well, I... I think so. I... Uh. Oh, I... Oh, I feel sort of dizzy. Huh. I... I don't understand what How'd what you get went here, on? anyhow? We must have... Why, well, we must have walked past this spot a half a dozen times. What happened to him? I'm, I'm not quite sure. He was all right just a minute ago. I was with him in the house, the castle. He was all right except for the effects of the wine. And that seemed to be wearing now, off. Now, just hold on a minute. You know, you ain't making no kind of sense. Uh, I'm so cold. Oh, he's oh. soaked to the skin. The rain stopped, thank goodness, but we'd better get him He was inside. perfectly dry a minute ago. And then the house actually did just crumble around us the way she said it would. Only, of course, it wasn't real, or we'd both be... How did he get that wet? I hope you know what you're talking about. I sure don't. Oh, I feel stiff. I ache all oh, over. Oh, we've got to get you home and into a nice, warm, dry bed before you catch your death. fell down all around us, Sarah, just the way she said it would. Only I didn't think it could hurt us because, well, you see, I knew the house had already fallen down. Well, I'm, I, we must have imagined the whole thing. 
I must have been lying there on the ground and in the ruins the whole time. All I know is we walked past there a half dozen times and you wasn't there. You just wasn't. So I don't see how we can say it was all imagination. It was real, all right. While it lasted, it was real. Oh, here's the car. Now, once we get you in there with the heater turned on, you'll feel a lot better, Ronnie. I feel a lot better already. What in the world was that? That... That was your Katrina. I wouldn't be surprised. Katrina? I left my hex sign back there in them ruins. Reckon if it works as well as the superstitious folks claim it works, we won't be having no more trouble with Katrina. A ghost Katrina certainly was. Any woman who was killed by a jealous husband in the 18th century and shows up again in 1975 must be considered a ghost. But is it really fair to call her a siren and a witch? By Ronnie's admission, one thing is certain. Whether Katrina was a siren, a ghost, a witch, or all three, Ronnie was lucky to get out of that one alive. I'll be back in a few moments. Ronnie and Peg spent the remainder of their vacation in Maine. It's a beautiful state. Why shouldn't they? But they gave Dutchman's Woods a wide berth. To this day, when Ronnie Andrews sees more than three trees forming a clump, he crosses to the other side of the road. So between now and our next look into the nature of things, stay away from all suspicious-looking forests. We're saving you for another end quite different kind of jeopardy. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Jada Rowland, Santos Ortega, Joan Loring, and Mary Jane Higby. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... Bright and beautiful music. This is KIXI, AM and FM, Seattle. CBS News. America's largest city at this hour appears but a humbled pauper with a tin cup. A potential borrower has said no. The city is only 14 hours away from going broke. I'm Jerry Landay reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Correspondent Robert Shackney has been covering critical negotiations at the New York City office of Governor Hugh Carey and has just filed this report. Delegates from the New York City's Teachers Union early today refused to lend New York City $100 million from the union's pension fund. And that seemed to set the stage for a major default by New York later today. Without the teacher money, the rest of the loans that the city was counting on cannot be used. That means that the city will be unable to pay off $453 million in city notes that fall due when the banks open at 9 a.m. Eastern Time this morning. In a last-minute effort to salvage the situation, financier Felix Rowerton, acting for the city, said he was asking the teacher representatives to come back for another meeting at 7 o'clock in the morning, two hours before the banks open. Rowerton said he was appealing to the state controller for extra money, also appealing to the Federal Reserve System and the federal government. At this point, it appears unlikely that there's time to get money from any of these other sources. Rowerton said that if default should occur, among other things, in the coming week, some city workers might not be paid. 
Robert Shackney, CBS News, New York. On Thursday, Vice President Nelson Rockefeller said a default by New York would have a catastrophic effect on the entire nation's economy. Women activists have won a victory in Washington, and men are among the beneficiaries. The Federal Reserve Board has spelled out a set of regulations to implement the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. The act goes into effect the end of the month. The regulations prevent lenders, banks, credit card companies, department stores, anyone who offers installment credit or loans from discriminating against applicants on the basis of sex or marital status. Neither sex can be denied loans on the basis of his or her spouse's credit rating, nor can they deny loans to working women simply because they're of childbearing age. And if loans are denied to either sex, the lender must now state why. President Ford made a highly publicized phone call Thursday to Meriden, Connecticut. On the other end was James Salamides, age 19. He's the young man who accidentally ran into Mr. Ford's armored limousine Tuesday night. Salamides describing himself as uninjured but nervous. Mr. Ford confessed he'd been jolted. There's been an observation on all this from a congressman who wants to be president, Democrat Morris Udall of Arizona. The president makes a kind of a macho thing out of it, as, as though all of us in America were questioning his courage and manhood, and he has to prove it every morning by uh, acting the part of a duck in a shooting gallery. Uh, I wish he'd stay home a little more often and do a little more work and protect himself. Uh, I don't want to see... Uh, the American people go through any more trauma of the kind we've had in the last 10 years. That comment from Udall in a Tucson, Arizona news conference. Starting the first of the year, nearly 6 million federal employees will have to pay more for their Blue Cross Blue Shield medical coverage. 35% more. Two American scientists who've won the Nobel Prize for Medicine say their work on the links between viruses and cancer have convinced them to look elsewhere for the primary causes of malignancy. Dr. Howard Temin of the University of Wisconsin and Dr. David Baltimore of MIT suggest research money would be better spent probing chemical causes of cancer in the environment, in cigarettes, in agents such as asbestos. I'm Jerry Landay, CBS News. Tony Perez broke his hitting slump Thursday night, building two homers and leading the Cincinnati Reds to a 6-2 win over the Boston Red Sox in Game 5 of the World Series. Cincinnati has now won three games. Boston has two wins. Game 6 is scheduled for Saturday in Boston. Doug Poling, CBS News.